Yeah! So for today's video, we're gonna travel to the Batverse from 1966 and we are gonna focus a bit on the first live action appearance of the Riddler! Yeah! So, alright, let's go! Alright, so we start off at the Gotham City World Fair in the pavilion of the Republic of Moldovia. The Moldovian Prime Minister is about to cut into the cake of friendship when BOOM! The cake totally blows up! And the explosion is accompanied by a riddle. A riddle which completely confounds the local police force, including Chief O'Hara and Inspector Bash. So, Commissioner Gordon has no choice, right? He calls Batman! So, Batman and Robin cruise on down to police headquarters to answer this riddle. Why is an orange like a bell? Which Robin quickly answers, because they both need to be peeled. Batman realizes that the riddle must refer to the Peel Art Gallery. So there must be an art heist afoot, right? So off they go to the art gallery. Batman and Robin climb up the side of the art gallery and catch the Riddler red-handed. He's pointing a gun at the art gallery director and it looks like he's stealing an artifact. But... Holy treachery! After Batman arrests the Riddler, we find out that the arrest is in error because this artifact belongs to the Riddler and he was giving it to the art gallery. And the gun, well, that was just a cigarette lighter. So Riddler's not happy and he sues Batman for one million dollars. Like hands over the lawsuit papers and everything, eh? Like this is not where I thought this was gonna wind up, but holy crap. Meanwhile, at Wayne Manor... So Bruce Wayne and Dick Grayson are totally bummed, right? Part of this lawsuit is to have Batman and Robin's secret identity revealed, so that means that they're totally hosed. Like, holy game ender, Batman! But The duo find hidden riddles in the lawsuit document, and it leads them to an address. 222 Glover Avenue! It's a hip swinging discotheque, man. But Robin can't get in there because he is underage, you know? And well, you know, the law is the law, man. So he hangs out in the Batmobile while Batman dances inside like a champ. But Batman's orange juice was spiked. <laughs> and it passes out like a lightweight. Like, holy weak sauce, Batman. So Riddler and his cronies, the Mole Hill mob, kidnap Robin and go down to the sewers to their hideout. Drunk Batman can't drive the Batmobile because he's totally hammered and the police take his keys. Man, you would think Bruce Wayne would have a drink or two in his life, eh? But I guess not. So Batman's hammered and Robin is kidnapped. What will happen to our crime-fighting crusaders? Find out. Same bat time, same bat channel. Oh, we're back, all right. So with Robin kidnapped and like knocked out unconscious, Riddler's associate Molly was making a mask out of Robin's face to lure Batman into a trap. So now Molly has a perfect disguise as Robin where she looks exactly like him. She turns on Robin's homing beacon to which Batman picks this Robin up. So Batman takes this Molly disguised Robin back to the Batcave. But it was all a ruse for Molly to get close to Batman. She will eliminate him now in this cave. She's got the hook on him now, hey? <laughs> well, for a second, but nope. Now that she's been exposed and her plan to eliminate Batman fell through, she, for no reason whatsoever, puts herself into danger by climbing up the Batmobile's nuclear power source. Which is freaking dangerous. It's a nuclear power source. Why are you getting close to this thing? And that's pretty much what Batman's thinking too, and he's trying to help her get out of there. And instead of just like literally casually walking away from the danger, she gets herself deeper and deeper towards the core of the nuclear power power source until she just falls into this thing and dies disintegrated like this scene made no sense meanwhile with commissioner gordon's help batman finds out where the riddler is hiding and it's under the subway system to get into the riddler's hideout batman explodes a hole in the wall which is kind of funny you know like as much as batman preaches about upholding the law property damage and putting citizens in harm's way like with an explosion like that's that's not a problem <laughs> 
But it doesn't matter, because the Riddler escaped. But, you know, at least, you know, Batman was able to save Robin. And Robin listened to the Riddler's plan, so he kind of figured out where Riddler's gonna go next. And we wind up back at the Moldavian Pavilion at the World Fair. Riddler gasses the place with laughing gas, and he is stealing the Mammoth of Moldovia, which is this statue kind of a thing that is full of priceless stamps. But... Holy Trojan Elephant, Batman! The dynamic duo bust out of this mammoth, and they wind up ruining a national treasure. <laughs> they beat the crap out of the molehill mob in easy fashion, and well, the Riddler, he gets away. The million dollar lawsuit that the Riddler put on Batman is nullified as the Riddler doesn't show up to court. And well, that's good news for Batman and Robin. They don't have to expose themselves in court. <laughs> And they ain't getting sued. So yeah, yeah. And with that, that is the end of this uh, fantastic bat tale. <laughs> what an awesome episode, eh? And what an awesome series. This was the pilot episode for the entire series, you know, so it was kind of a different kind of a pace to it, you know, from other episodes further down the line. But it was still really good, right? Like the Riddler, the Riddler. So like, I just gotta say right off the bat, um, no pun intended, that this Frank Gorshin portrayal of the Riddler is my favorite portrayal of the Riddler all time. You know, no offense to anyone else who's played the Riddler, man, but he freaking nailed this role, man. Like, it is pretty phenomenal in this really cheesy, corny show how you can have a portrayal of a Riddler being so deadly serious in one instance and being so incredibly zany in another instance and then everything in between too like he he put a lot into this character and it's just awesome to see and it's really phenomenal in this episode because basically the riddler won well not entirely but basically right like with the lawsuit man all he had to do was just wait it out and actually go to court against batman and then boom the cape crusaders are over right but that's not how the riddler rolls no no dude's crazy like actually committing a crime and getting away with all the spoils of it is one thing but to defeat your enemy intellectually is something quite different and that's really where the riddler shines right so it wasn't enough that he beat Batman already he wants to further beat him just to prove his you know intellectual dominance in puzzles and stuff like that right it would be kind of a thing like once he gets Batman out of the way like who would be the equal to Batman you know to solving his riddles right nobody so it's like ah what's the fun if I just rob a bank after and get away with it but man oh man that lawsuit like right off the bat hey eh, man that was pretty awesome but yeah yeah if you haven't checked this series out before man I definitely suggest you do it man it is such a good romp and just crazy zany campy fun but yeah other than that there are some other things behind the scenes learn more about the riddler and all that kind of stuff uh, over here so this is the third time that we have seen batman in live action the first time was in 1943 in a film serial series called batman and that one showed the live action debuts of batman slash bruce wayne robin slash dick grayson and Alfred the slash butler <laughs> There was a sequel to that serial in 1949 called Batman and Robin and that one showed Commissioner Gordon making his film debut and then fast forward a little bit and ba bam You have this live-action show which debuted well basically every other character <laughs> So like for the newcomers man, you have police chief O'Hara and he was created for this show he did show up in the comics, you know, for a little bit after. He was first mentioned in World's Finest, the number 151 in 1966. And then he was first shown in Detective Comics 470 in 1977. More of a TV guy than a comic book guy, I guess. And now we have the Riddler. Riddler's first appearance was Detective Comics 140 in 1948. And he first showed up with that classic skin-tight green suit with the question mark and the pink highlights, you know, which is, you know, the iconic Riddler uniform, right? But for the TV show, they gave Riddler another iconic uniform. 
not so much the uh, spandex, but a pretty snazzy green and black suit, you know, with the fancy hat with the question marks all over it. And this was done at the request of Frank Gorshin, because he's like, man, I want to look good, <laughs> you know? And he did, man. Like, that suit is awesome. The suit uniform was later adapted into the Riddler for his comic book appearances, and eventually his uniform entirely was this suit that started off in this episode. But still, you know, you gotta flash out the leotards once in a while, I guess, because they're kind of neat too. The story of this episode is loosely taken from Batman 171 from 1965, and it was actually mentioned to be the inspiration for this first episode. It's not a complete copy by really any stretch of the imagination. You have a bunch of things that have been adapted into the TV show, like, let's say, the Mole Hill mob um, existing. <laughs> Them having their headquarters in an abandoned subway worker's tool house. You know, the Riddler looking like he's stealing the cross artifacts at the Peel Art Gallery, you know, with the cigarette lighter gun. <laughs> The riddle about why an orange and a bell are the same, you know, stuff like that. Those are all taken and adapted into a new script, and the rest of the story is, like, completely different from the comic book, man. But, you know, there was enough in there for them to be like, yeah, man, we can make a pretty happen happening story, which they did. You know, so there is a pretty popular tale as to how this series got to be. So William Dozier producer of the show, he would say that Hugh Hefner, you know, would host parties at the Playboy Mansion where they would show the old Batman serials from the 40s, you know, and everyone there drinking and having a good time would just laugh their ass off, you know, point at the screen and like laugh at how silly and campy the whole show is. And then that's when William was like, you know what? I should make a show like that, but like a self-spoofing parody, but still have it just as zany and cheesy. Another story is that ABC executive Yale Udoff attended a screening of the old serials at a theater and he was so impressed of how the crowd positively reacted to the show and to the characters that he got his buddies at the network to be like hey man we should make a batman show i'm sure both stories are probably true and it's just from different angles you know but still the boom man like it's it's kind of neat <laughs> And the show really worked out pretty awesomely. Like, it's kind of a funny thing. During this time in the comics, you know, Batman was, you know, still a really popular character, but he wasn't the upper echelon of popular superhero characters, you know? Not like he is today. And even when ABC kind of got a quick survey together of what kind of a superhero show would you like to see, Batman was kind of lower on the list. People mostly wanted to see, like, you know, Superman, Dick Tracy, The Phantom, you know, other kind of characters like that. But Batman being kind of lower down on that list, it was a lot easier for them to get the rights for the show. And boom, they did! And it's a good thing they did, man, because this really skyrocketed Batman's popularity. He really rose up on that list of popular superheroes, thanks to this show. And actually, not even just Batman, even the Riddler as well. He really wasn't that popular of a villain, you know, during this time in the comics either. And that's why everybody was kind of in shock that they picked the Riddler to be the first special guest villain for this show. It's like, you really couldn't have picked anyone better? Like, I don't know, the Joker, <laughs> you know? But man, like, Frank Goshen, like, really just nailed his role out of the park. And it actually made the Riddler much more popular as well. He showed up in more comic book stories and kind of had a bit more focus on his character. So that worked out for everybody, you know, all together, you know, one hand washes the other. And a quick little uh, final note here. I know with the Joel Schumacher Batman movies, how he included the bat nipples on the bat suit and everyone was all in a tizzy. <laughs> well, here's a screenshot from the second episode. The bat nipples live! <laughs> So yeah, that's pretty much the bulk I have for this episode here. I will get more info in when I do some more Batverse videos, you know, but you know, for the meantime, I guess uh, with this, that, those, and the other things, uh, that's that! Right on, and there you go. So thanks for watching the video. I hope you liked it as much as I did making it. Also, feel free to check out the source material that I featured in this video. And if you want to leave a comment on anything you may have liked or things I might have missed in this, you know, feel free to do so. Or anything else, you know, just to say hi. That's cool too. And other than that, you know, uh, have a great day. Thanks.